So guys, today's video is actually going to be an updated trading guide. I made one of these a while back. I've actually, I think I've made two trading guides total. And uh, so today's video is actually going to be sort of an updated like September uh, trading guide. So it's hopefully going to help you guys out with uh, figuring out all the different aspects of trading and stuff like that. And I'm going to go through everything kind of fast so you can kind of just get the information and move on. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So first of all, obviously the seven day trade ban is still in effect. Uh, you are going to be making profit a lot slower if you are choosing to trade uh, in this current day and age, but it is still possible and people have still done like nothing to a knife and you know, that kind of thing. Uh, it just takes oh, quite a while, a lot of patience and stuff like that, but it is still possible. So yeah, it's still, still very possible. Um, not something to get discouraged about just because there's a seven day ban. It is so possible to mitigate that as well with like TF2 keys and, uh, and Dota Arcanas and uh, Dragon Claw hooks and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, let's talk about that next. So a Dota 2 Arcana or the Dragon Claw hook are actually items that you can in fact buy instead of having to deal with a seven day trade hold. Uh, an Arcana goes for roughly like 20 to $30 in this current day and age, depending on the Arcana obviously. And then a Dragon Claw hook goes anywhere from like 600 to $700. Uh, I've seen some of them even reach like near the 800 range at some points. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely for the higher tier people. If you are trading like the 20 to $50 skins, then you can definitely uh, go for some Arcanas. Or if you're trying to get a knife, you can buy a few Arcanas. It's, it's easier to have Arcanas than it is to have keys in my opinion. Uh, and, and a lot of people that are uh, using CSGO to trade still do want Arcanas. And a lot of them are actually trying to get Arcanas just to invest in them because they are pretty good. And then uh, obviously you have TF2 keys as well. Now uh, these are actually a pretty good rate of exchange for uh, for CSGO keys. You can actually trade, I believe it's 10 CSGO keys for 11 TF2 keys. So that's kind of a weird sort of exchange rate, but that's basically what it goes off on a baseline. So uh, you can actually get some extra, you know, extra little bit of TF2 uh, money if you are doing TF2 keys because they're worth a little bit less than CSGO keys are. So guys, that is, is a few ways to mitigate the trade hold that we currently have. And so uh, you can use all of these different methods in conjunction to figure out the best way that works for you to mitigate the trade hold if you're trying to do that. Otherwise, you'll have to deal with it if you're doing like regular CSGO keys and regular CSGO items. Uh, but there is ways to mitigate it, obviously. So the next thing we should talk about is sort of the fundamentals of trading. So with all online marketplaces and online trading, there are a few fundamentals you need to think about. Uh, first of all, the main way to make profit when you're trading is using upgrading and downgrading. So the whole concept of upgrading and downgrading is turning your items into more items or turning a lot of your items into one item. So uh, turning a lot of your items into one item is an upgrade. And uh, basically when you're upgrading your items, you're going to have to overpay for the upgraded item because there is going to usually be a large increase in price and also a large increase in demand in that one item that you're getting. Furthermore, you're trading a bunch of different items for it. So for that reason, usually you have the uh, obligation to uh pay a little bit more extra just because you're upgrading all of your stuff into one item. Now this doesn't apply to like liquid currency like uh, AK red lines or uh, keys. It does not apply to those because they're a liquid currency and uh, you can trade a lot of them for an equivalent value. So you can keep that in mind when you're thinking of upgrading stuff. The next thing is a downgrade. A downgrade is where you're turning one of your items into many items. And uh, when you're downgrading stuff, you can actually expect the person to overpay a little bit just because you are getting multiple items from them. And that means that uh, since the person's getting multiple items, there is going to be a bit of, uh, of a higher chance of risk and a higher chance of price fluctuation because there are more items involved. And so there's a higher chance for them just naturally to be able to fluctuate in price. You're taking on a bit of a risk by downgrading, but uh, you are getting a bit of overpay as well that can cover that risk. So you can expect a little bit of overpay yeah, usually just like a couple percentage points of overpay and uh, you can't really expect that much, but you can get some and that's sort of how you make profit in this day and age is just like upgrading into one thing, waiting for that thing to maybe like rise a little bit and then downgrading it and making a bit of money off of it and you can end up with like more stuff. So like let's say you start with like a key for example and you downgrade that key into about $2.70 worth of items. That's a pretty good downgrade, but let's say that's what happens. And then you can trade those $2.70 of items either individually or you can trade them all together up for about like let's say two dollars and sixty cents worth uh, a little bit over what a key is valued at and uh, that'll actually mean that you've made like ten cents profit and that's pretty nice that is obviously a very good scenario and those percentage points are going to be a lot different for you personally but you can make a, a few profitable trades by doing that so uh, that's sort of how you profit in this day and age and uh, if you use the other tip with using the TF2 keys and the Dota items, you can actually make a lot of really consistent profit and not have to worry about a lot of trade holds. So I think that's one of the best ways that you can trade in CSGO in the current day and age. All right, guys, the next section of this video is going to be dedicated towards different ways that you can find trades. 
So there are quite a few. Uh, the first one is finding a Discord server. This is probably the most prominent one in this current era of gaming. Uh, Discord's a very good place to, you know, have people come together and create a marketplace. And uh, obviously a marketplace is where there's some competition, there's buyers and sellers all put together. And I think Discord is a great place for that. So there are a few trading Discords you can choose from. Uh, there's obviously, you can just join my Discord. There are people that actively trade in there and have made trades in the past. And there are a lot of, are a lot of people that actually post their trades in my Discord. So if you are looking to do that, you can for sure. There's also a pretty large CS trading server on Discord that I've heard about. I've been offered to it uh, to join it from a few people in my current Discord, and uh, I don't know what it's actually called. So if you want to go check it out, then you have to, you can join my Discord and then uh, ask the people there for an invite link to it. And that one seems to be a pretty large one with a lot of people that are trading CSGO items. Now, uh, the next thing that you can do is you can head over to r slash global offensive trade. It's a subreddit on the site Reddit, and uh, this is also a really, really good place. I think this is actually the best place that you can personally go. Uh, for getting trades and finding people to buy your items because global offensive trade you can kind of just throw your trade up there and then people throughout the day from all different time zones can kind of like see your post and upvote it or like talk about your pricing you can also like ask for help on what an item is worth and stuff like that and it'll be a little bit better than going to a trade server on discord the trade server on discord might be a little bit more active but the global offensive trade is going to be a lot uh, more people with a lot of different opinions so you can get a pretty diverse opinion on your items and what they're worth and stuff like that and you can do like price checking and all this really nice stuff. So it's a very, very uh, good place. It's helped me quite a lot. I've made quite a few trades on r slash global offensive trade. So it's a really good place to go. There are obviously other trading subreddits, but you have to be careful because I know that some of them are actually scam subreddits. And uh, there are quite a few of them that are like that. I would just stick to Global Offensive Trade if I were you. That's a pretty good one to go to. That's a, sort of a one-stop shop that you need to go to. Now, finally, the last place that you can go is just on a CSGO trading server. These are pretty few and far between these days. Uh, they used to be a lot more prominent back in the day. And there are still a few that are around and pretty active and pretty lively. But uh, they very much so have like sort of fallen off. But uh, there are, they still do exist. If you just look up Trade on the CSGO uh, community server page, you'll probably be able to find a few of them that you can go on to and uh, maybe find someone on there that wants one of your items. Those ones tend to be a little bit more fun because you can kind of just AFK in them and uh, you can just like jump around and show off your items, which I think is pretty cool. And then you can also get like in-game screenshots and uh, people can get sort of an in-game view at a lot of your items a lot easier. So I think there is some benefits to that as well. Obviously, you can try all of these uh, different techniques and put them together to kind of find the best way to find good trades. Uh, but make sure you don't get sharked. And let's talk about sharking next. So sharking in CSGO is where someone who acts like they know what an item is worth uh, will tell you that an item is worth a certain price, but it is actually not worth that price. So uh, this happens a few ways. Usually someone will be like, oh, well, I have a bayonet Doppler, and uh, it's worth like 9 trillion keys because if it's some crazy pattern or whatever, it's worth a lot more. And so they'll get you to pay them more uh, items and more value for their item than it's actually worth, and you'll lose out on a lot of money. So just make sure that you're using some sites, like for example, CSGO Stash, uh, Bitskins, the Steam Community Market even, uh, Steam Analysis is also kind of okay, or sorry, Steam Analyst is also kind of an okay site. You can use these different sites as well uh, to kind of get a good idea of what your item is worth. You can also use price checking on uh, the Global Offensive Trade subreddit that I was talking about to figure out what your item is really worth and what other people's items are really worth so that you make sure that you're not getting sharked. And uh, also, if you just want to join my Discord, like I said again, there, I am there active and uh, there are also some investment helpers there that can help you get an accurate price on your items and talk about if a trade is fair or not. And uh, you can kind of, you know, go through some of those calculations and make sure you're getting what you actually want. And I think that can work really, really well as long as you use it correctly. Just make sure that you're not getting sharked. Another thing, obviously, is scamming. You just want to stay really far away from anything that seems too good to be true. That's usually the best way that you can detect a scam, if it seems too good to be true. Obviously, if someone's giving you, like, a free gift and uh, it seems, like, really genuine, then that's okay. But, like, for a lot of the things, like, oh, can you join my team for this tournament? Or can you can you give my tournament a plus rep on this site? It doesn't take that long or whatever. Those are scams. If someone ever sends you a link to a site that you don't know, even if it's like a Bitskins link, make sure you look at the link very, very carefully and make sure you only click that link if you are absolutely sure that is legit. Also, do not click links in general. That is one of the worst ways to do things. I have sort of a no link policy, so if people ever send me links, even on my Discord, even people that I've talked to and know for a long time, I still don't have them, you know, send me the links, even to like Steam. I don't have them send links to me on Steam. Because instead I just want them to send me like native links where I can just use the Steam app on my computer to get to their uh, profile or whatever they want to send me. Because that way it's a lot more safe for me personally and I don't have to deal with getting scammed or fished. Now phishing is very, very common. There are sites that are literally look identical to like Bitskins or CS Money. They have like very, very, very tiny differences. They can even replicate the actual site itself. 
So with that being said, make sure you are not getting fished. Do not click any sort of suspicious links at all, and you'll be fine. You'll move on with your life. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. So that's how you can kind of avoid being scammed in 2019. There are a lot of scammers out there, and uh, it's usually pretty like easy to tell if one of person if a person is actually a scammer or not based on their Steam profile. But make sure you're looking into that a lot. And I'll, also, if you're unsure of something, you can also ask some people in the Discord server that I talked about earlier. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how you can prevent yourself from getting scammed. So guys, it is about going to cut it for this video. Hopefully this was really informative and helpful to a lot of you out there that are looking to make some more profit, and especially the trading side of CSGO. Uh, I know this was a little bit of a longer video than I usually make, but hopefully this was good for giving you a good all-in-one comprehensive guide to how to trade in CSGO.